What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Progressive Gentleman Podcast. As always, we're your hosts. I'm Dan. I'm Matt. And thank you for taking the time to nerd out about music with us. Uh, this episode sponsored by Eargasm Earplugs. Use code GENTLEMAN10 at checkout and get a nice discount and take the step to protect your hearing today. Uh, we, we told you in the last episode we were going to, or actually not even just in the last episode, but we made a post on Instagram, social media to a little, uh, little teaser to state that we were going to get you two more episodes before this, uh, before this year was out. Uh, one of them being a hidden gems episode. And that is what we're bringing to you today. Um, another one of our favorite episodes to do because it gives us a reason to go discover new music, listen to new music. Sometimes, you know, you guys are giving us suggestions, uh, bands are reaching out to us. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of going down the Spotify rabbit hole. Uh, and, I feel like uh, this episode format is the one that like encapsulates like the reason that we made the podcast to begin with. Honestly, is like for us to dig in and talk about bands that we discovered. Like our water cooler talk is, dude, I found this band. They're really good. You need to check them out. And so, yeah. like this episode is kind of that for us. I was gonna say, yeah, those conversations or what ultimately led us to wanting to do a podcast in the first place, which is, yeah, so the, yeah, that's absolutely right. <laughs> I, I never thought about it that way, but yeah, 100%. This is it's, kind of... It's funny because I think this was actually a later format that we came out was, with. Like it yeah, was. this was, one, this was but, one of those ones where it was like, we need to find something different to do because we were doing like concert reviews, which was cool, um, but like, you know, not many people. I, I don't know. I don't know if... We, let us know if you give a shit about concert reviews and we can get back into that. But I, I feel yeah. like those episodes didn't get as much traction as like, you know, episodes where people are like, oh, I can discover a new band to listen to. Because like basically yeah. what, we, what we try to do with this format is we give you the band, a little background about the band, um, and then like try to give you comps. So it's like, oh, OK, well, if I like this band, then I'm probably going to like, you know, this new band. Um, go a little bit into their discography. Not really. Um, you know, it's it's sort of just a quick little synopsis of here's this band they're pretty cool they sound like this this is what they have out there go check it out yeah um, and if there's like a really noteworthy song or something that like stuck out to us that we really enjoyed with like throw that in there too um but usually it's more of like a they sound like this and they have these albums or this you know discography that you can check out yeah kind of thing and, uh, might as well take a dive right into it yeah, let's, um, let's get into it. So this first band, uh, it's a band we've already talked about a little bit, um, mostly because we discovered this band thanks to Jim Gray from Caligula's Horse. Shout out to Jim. Uh, shout out to Jim, and thank you so much because I genuinely have not stopped listening to this band <laughs> uh, since he recommended them. Uh, and the band is Exploring Bird Song. Uh, I'd classify them as like prog rock meets like prog pop. Um, it's an interesting blend of like those types of styles. Uh, they're from London. Um, they, they're self-described as like piano driven and that's very evident in their music. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there is no guitar, which is wild. Um, because there's only a bass player, a pianist slash like synth player, and then a drummer. Uh, obviously there's a vocalist as well, a female vocalist, which I'm a huge fan of female vocals in music in general. I'm a sucker for it. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's funny, but like just talking about the, like, there is no guitarist. I don't know. We were talking about this like before and it's like, didn't really notice it. Like in my first, like kind of quick listen through, it was just like, wow, I really like this. And then like you pointed out and I was like, Oh yeah, I guess there isn't, but like the piano just is so good and it like feels then like, I mean, all of the music just creates this huge sound stage that like, they don't need it. It sounds way more massive than a three piece band. And it's an, it's impressive what they're able to accomplish with, uh, you know, just three members and, you know, no, like we said, no guitar. So it's, it's impressive. Um, I would love to see them live because I feel like that would be a pretty cool thing to witness live. Yeah, um, I would also be interested if they pull it off. I'm sure they do. Um, but uh, as far as comps go, uh, it was tough for me because like they do they do come up after like I listen to Caligula's Horse, which is interesting. I would maybe yeah. say some of their softer stuff, like some of Caligula's Horse's softer stuff, I can see a comp. 
Um, but the biggest comp that I could come up with is uh, Yvette Young's solo stuff. Yeah, I definitely think that's a that's a good comp. Some some of the Covet stuff too, but definitely more so her her solo stuff. Yeah, like her piano EP and like some of her acoustic EPs. Uh, some of the songs on there like uh, give me exploring bird song vibes, pretty heavy. Um, and then I also threw in uh, White Moth, Black Butterfly, which if if you guys aren't familiar, that is uh, Daniel Tompkins from Tesseract. That's, right. that's his. Yeah. Uh, that's his like pop ish side project. Yeah, it's like um, like electronic y poppy, like synthy <clears throat> kind of stuff, right? Yeah, and uh there he it's like a duet type thing. It's him and, and uh I I wish I knew her name. I don't. I really should have done the research and jotted it down. <laughs> but um it's him and a female vocalist and they do it's like a lot of duet singing. It's very, very good. I um, I've heard the song I haven't like listened to a ton of their music, just the stuff that you've like told me to check out or that you've played. Um, but I dug what I've, what I've heard. And I do like from the few songs that I've heard, I definitely can see some of that in there too. And it, I think that if you're a fan of them, you'd be a fan of exploring bird song as well. Yeah. Even the band like Haken, um, especially like their newer stuff on fauna. Uh, I think a lot of that stuff sort of vibes with what exploring bird song does as well. Um, yeah, like the poppy parts from Fauna definitely have like kind of lean towards this the stuff that Exploring Birdsong does on there. On and I wouldn't and I wouldn't consider like some of these bands a comp, but um, you know, if you listen to bands like The Deer Hunter um or uh like Manchester Orchestra or I you know, some Coed and Cambria stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. the more th- the- <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I I was on a sh- I was almost on a streak. We'll say like it's been zero shows now since Dan's mentioned. It. <laughs> but you know, if you if you're into the prog rock space, especially like the modern prog rock space, I feel like this is a band you can vibe to. Um, because as I've said many times, that's kind of the camp that I'm in these days. Uh, and I literally haven't been able to stop listening to their uh, "Dancing in the Face of Danger" EP. Uh, I went and found it online and ordered that shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's an incredible EP. They also have another EP called The Thing with Feathers. Equally as good, but for some reason, I don't know, I just haven't been able to stop listening to Dancing in the Face of Danger. Uh, and uh, Pyre is, oh. is a song I would highly recommend. Yeah, and that's the opening track too, isn't it? It is, and yeah, it goes hard. It, yeah. yeah, and it starts off with like... There's you, even like some like break breakdowny type parts, which like I mean I guess really all you need is a rhythm section to do something like that. But like it's cool to hear in like a progressive pop rock type setting, like kind of like what Haken does uh, at the end of Alphabet of Me, like where you don't expect it, and it's not like you know it's not a breakdown like you're gonna hear from a band like Lorna Shore or some shit. But like <laughs> you know in the yeah. traditional music sense you know, it's a breakdown and it's cool to hear it in this type of music. I don't know. Yeah. Like a piano band yeah. with a breakdown. is like, Oh, not expecting that. Um, yeah. I also like, uh, I was not expecting when I saw they have a song called diamond eyes. I like after listening to dancing in the face of danger and then seeing that that song was like listed on their tracks. And I was like, no way this is a Deftone song. Like, they just happened to have another song called Diamond Eyes and was listening to it and was like, no shit, this is a Deftones cover. Yep, and it's really cool. Diamond Eyes. Yeah, it's, it is it's, cool. It's really cool. Like, you know, it's, it's... It's another band that if you like Deftones, like, I can see... I mean, Deftones is kind of unique in in a sense. Like, they're not really a band that gets associated with, like, prog rock a whole bunch, but... um. I feel like they just do so much different stuff with their music that it's kind of like progressive in that way. That's like some of their albums are like new metal and then some of them are just like almost like more metal core. And yeah, they're all over the place for sure. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, in a way, I guess Deftones, that's another band. Uh, if you like Deftones, it's another potential comp, but not but that, comp, but kind but of what if, you're saying with like the, if you just like bands in the prog rock space. Yeah. Then you would probably, probably dig this but yeah huge fan uh i think both of us are uh 
I plan on listening to that EP again as soon as we're done with this episode. And uh, <laughs> You can't stop. I, I can't stop. It's so good. So uh, definitely check out Exploring Birdsong, prog rock slash pop. If that's, that's the best I can describe them. Uh, from London, uh, and that's in the face of danger and the thing with feathers. Those are their two EPs. Uh, stream them on Spotify. Check them out anywhere. Support them. And dancing in the face of danger that came out this year, right? That did come out this year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you yep. got a nice new one to to check out. I, I believe we will mention that as an honorable <laughs> mention in the uh, album of the year episode that we'll be releasing here soon. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> it, it, we don't put EPs in our top 10 we can't like we, that's just yeah. something we refuse to do so uh so it's not as much a spoiler but we will drop that. spoiler light uh, yeah it's a, <laughs> it's a light spoiler um but yeah so moving on to a band that's not similar to exploring birdsong in any way uh um, <laughs> very very different a band called effect a progressive death metal band from the uk um these guys are like progressive death it's tough to put these guys in a box right because there, there's some groove metal in there like maybe some sludge slash doom metal in there yeah I even get some like blackened death metal flavor at times um but uh i mean just to sort of show the array of of ways we can sort of discover music too with with this awesome outlet that we now have with this podcast you know exploring birdsong we found out through an interview with a band member of a band we listened to um, effect we actually discovered well we didn't discover them they discovered us right so they actually reached out to us yeah um and so just you know throwing that out there we do read our email we do read our messages um, yeah sorry if it takes us a while to uh you know get back to you or like incorporate stuff into an episode we uh but, we're a two-man show so we we try our best but we yeah. do read them but again, this is this is the dream, right? I mean, this is the cool. This is like why we did this is to discover new music and yeah, absolutely. Um, so we appreciate to have an outlet to bullshit about it. And so it's yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's cool. So definitely, uh, you know, thank you to Effect or whomever uh, from their uh, you know like management or, or management or whatever. Reach out to us. Thanks for thanks for reaching out and thinking about us, and uh, we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we're glad we got to dig into your but, music. Um, but so getting into it, so they just they just dropped a record um, called Theory of Mind. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's it's got like that gent style kind of mashuga esque stuff at times. Yeah. Um, but I would say the overall sound for me is reminiscent of uh, Gorgut's Colored Sands record. Um, like when I listen to that record. When I listen to Theory of Mind, I get a lot of that record, like sort of, bound, you know, popping up into my brain. I haven't listened to much of uh, of Gore Guts, but I, I feel like that's sort of a gaping uh, hole in my uh, like death metal. Uh, They're like they've got a lot discography of discography. I need to check a out. lot of records that were released like before. Either of us really were listening to. Yeah, I think they said when I was looking at their stuff, bef- like earlier, yeah, they, I think it was like 93. I was going to say they were primarily like in the 90s, but Colored Sands came out in 2013. So it had a lot more modern production. Yeah. Which is why I think that record stands out to me um, when listening to Effects record. Uh, just because production wise, it's comparable. Yeah. Um, I even get some car bomb, like Mordial era, minus the clean vocals, because car bomb does take a dive into into clean vocals. Um, where I I did not get any clean vocals. So if I missed them, my bad. Uh, in this, <laughs> I didn't I effect. didn't remember any in there. And like even like three minutes into the song uh, retraction on Theory of Mind, uh, I get a little bit of like a blackened style akin to like a black anvil. I don't, they're not a black anvil is not a super well-known band. So it's kind of, I guess hard for me or probably hard for anybody to grasp what I'm saying. Go listen to black anvil. Maybe you'll understand what I'm saying, but I checked sort of, a few of their songs out actually. Cause they were, I wasn't familiar <laughs> with them either. Um, so that's enough. That's some homework I'll have too for after the show. Yeah. Like, like three or so three minutes or so into re- the song retraction on theory of mind. I think it's like, that's one of the first couple tracks. 
trying to pull it up real quick, but my freaking Max being a piece yeah, of Yeah, another band, uh, too, <laughs> that, like, we, or at least I talked about a little bit, um, I think it was last year, maybe it was two years ago, um, Mass Warship had an album, uh, Portal Tombs, which is pretty sweet. Um, I got some, like, some similar, like, so if anyone checked them out from when we talked about them before, um, I think you'll, you'll dig effect is or effect. I'm not sure exactly on the pronunciation, but, um, I think you'll, and, you'll dig this too. And I even said at one point and like, I retracted this a little bit, but I'm going to bring it up anyways. Cause fuck it. <laughs> um, I get a little bit of like black Dahlia murder at times. Not, not like the technical side of black Dahlia murder, but some of the more like, uh, groovier, chuggier, like parts of like black Dahlia murder. Um, I, I was, it, you know, it popped into my brain basically whenever like I'm listening to a record for the first time, especially if my goal is to evaluate it. Um, I'll just randomly start jotting down. Like this reminded me of this and it yeah. did pop into my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I like definitely see it like, mentioning. like kind of if you, sh- if you took the like shreddy, like tech deathy like solo yeah. stuff that black dahlia does out of it and took more of like the groovy chuggy stuff that black dahlia does i can see i can see that as a as a comp also just like even if it's not a comp like if you like black dahlia you'll probably like these yeah. guys so sort of to recap that so it's like the gent style kind of like that you the gent flavor of mashuga uh gorgut's colored sand era like just overall sound really like that's that's what i get uh some car bomb mordial era minus the clean vocals with a little blackened seasoning sprinkled in there like, <laughs> like a band of black anvil like a band like black anvil um but yeah these guys have one full length theory of mind uh definitely go check it out it's it's really solid especially if you like any of these bands that we've just been throwing out there as comps or you know which it's funny, like having all those comps together is like just pick a little from this genre, a little from this genre. Like there's a lot to to go off of. So you that's know. the cool part about this type of music, though. Too, it's like these guys, you know, not specifically effect, but really just anybody in the progressive realm frequently take their inspiration from so many different sources, and it's always cool to sort of sit around and try to take a guess. And what seasonings they used in their in their music, you know? <laughs> yeah. What I mean? And half the time we're super off, but like that doesn't mean that we're wrong though either. Not maybe not for their inspiration, but you know, maybe you know, blue and yellow make green, right? So it's like, well, maybe they didn't mean to make green, but the shit's green now, you know? What I mean? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's like the band that we say that they sound like maybe is like, well, that's not their inspiration, but another band that inspired that band that we say they sound like is like, well, you know, kind of by, by proxy, we are, (laughs) we're sort of correct. (laughs) And that's what we're going to keep telling ourselves. So uh, we don't, (laughs) we don't really care what you have to say. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, so definitely check out effect. Uh, Again, they're uh, progressive. We're just going to call them a progressive death metal band just because again, it's tough to put a lot of these bands into a box. Um, from the UK. Thank you guys for reaching out to us. We appreciate it. And uh, we wish you the best of luck moving forward and keep in touch. And we'll definitely uh, keep on following your stuff for sure. Um, yeah. We would like to hear any uh, new singles or stuff you have in the works yep. in the future. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. But moving on, a band called Omega District. Uh, sticking in the progressive metal vein, getting a little bit away from the death groove doom sludge side of <laughs> all the, house. the good words and jumping more into the sort of the modern progressive metal sound uh for example the first the first track that i played uh from these guys off of their machine destiny record uh was a song called atmospheric blight and i immediately was like this sounds like veil of maya yeah, there's um, definitely a lot of the the Vale of Maya. I I actually sh- struggled a bit to like w- listening to their music was like I I know that I know bands that sound like this, but 
it's like just different enough that I'm like, I can't, I can't pinpoint something. And it was, I was kind of like stumped, but I'm like, I know there's something there. And then you said Vale of Maya, and I'm like, that's it. That's what, it, what I was looking for. And like more in the like, like ID era um, of Vale of Maya, not as much like the new record. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the old, like, older, yeah, like, like matriarch, mid generation stuff. Yeah, like Matriarch and what's like Eclipse? Eclipse, I think, is the other one. I don't know why I wanted to say like Midnight, but it's not it. It's not a Taylor Yeah, Swift Eclipse record. is the one that has like the um, green like face yeah. with the like the eye, like glowing eye on it. Yeah, and then as I sort of went further into their catalog, I also got a lot of After the Burial vibes. Yeah, that one, when you said that, that one, first Veil of Maya, I was like, oh, yeah, there you go. And then you said After the Burial, and I was like, oh, that's even more so, I think. I see that one. Yeah, like, like the Cursing early, Akhenaten. And, yeah, like the like, early Rare Form record. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I get a lot of that. But then, strangely enough, I also get hit with some, like, Rivers of Nile vibes. Um, this one, like... Some of, the, some of the heavier, like, moments that's what popped into my brain and it yeah could, it could be for no other reason other than my brain was like heavier progressive metal rivers of nile like it could it could be the only reason why that happened but that's what i wrote down so <laughs> yeah <laughs> there was there's enough nuggets in there that made you think of him so yeah if it if it triggers in my brain i write it down and then i try to find i, I should justify it before i get on the podcast and then try to justify <laughs> it on the microphone but no i mean the heavier stuff uh it it was heavier than the veil of maya after the burial comps to me so that's why i threw out a band like rivers of nile uh and I didn't go back and change it, so that's what I'm sticking with. And then <laughs> some of the more chaotic bits, which in Prague, when we say chaotic, that's a good thing. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's an endearing qual- quality in progressive metal. Um, but uh, Yeah, I guess I never really thought of it. Be, <laughs> that people could take that in a bad way, but... Yeah, for I mean, at least we, for we, you and I, we use chaotic to describe that it's like really cool and like, like frenetic. I mean, I, when we interviewed Crypto Dira uh, last episode, I, I like I approached it with caution because I've always referred to their music as organized chaos. Um, but like I, when you hear the word chaos, you you often think like, oh, you think my shit's just like not well put together and you know, chaotic, but no organized chaos. Like it, you, it's chaotic in the, but it's, it's chaotic by design. Like you're like purposely making it that way, but you're doing it in a way that is structured still. Yeah. But like when you hear it for the first time, you're like, Whoa, what is this? And, and like you get a little bit of that organized chaos here, uh, with Omega district to the point where I even wrote down between the buried and me as a comp. Yeah, um, I got and that. and not like a one to one, right? None of these are one to one. Again, we're finding the the secret sauce, right? We're trying <laughs> to figure out, you know, what we're trying to reverse engineer and, and find yeah. the uh, based off of the final product, <laughs> trying to find the uh, source ingredients. <laughs> exactly, and I feel like you know, while I would never say Omega District is like between the berry to me one to one, I get a little bit of that flavor, which is why I would think. You know, if you like a band like Between the Berry to Me, like you would probably enjoy some of what Omega District is trying to accomplish with their music as well. Um, yeah, I think more so with the instrumentation and the vocals, the BT band. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And comp. Yes, 100%. So, like, if you're, you know, don't expect like the Tommy Rogers style vocals necessarily, but they, there's like definitely instrumentation bits that I think are very similar. Or yeah, pretty much by. as soon as as soon as I would hear something that sounded a bit chaotic again, positive term. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's where I was like, oh, and I wrote down between the bear and me. So that's kind of like where I get that that sort of comp from. But it, it's also impressive. Um, it seems like it's a one one guy project. Like I don't I don't know if it's sort of like intervals where it's like you know one person's baby but they have other people do the stuff they like do the other instruments 
or if it's literally just one person that did all of it. Um, I mean, either way, it's, you know, impressive music. Um, but I, that's always cool to me, like the sort of solo project to make this like full yeah. thing. Guy's, guy's name is Miles Weber. Shout out Miles. Yeah, that, I was just, I, <laughs> I couldn't remember the name, but um, it's from Seattle, Washington, right? Is that? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Very cool. And yeah, that's, that's, that's wild. Uh, I mean, as a person who tries to make music in his bedroom, not saying that that's where Miles does his shit, but I'm just saying, like, as a person, as a person who tries to make music by themselves and fails miserably every time, <laughs> uh, yeah, it always impresses me that somebody can put out a product, especially its quality, as as what uh, Miles, you know, with Omega District, what he's doing with that. I mean, that's that's awesome. I wish I wish someone would listen to something I wrote ever and say the words between the buried and me afterwards. Like that would be, <laughs> or any of these bands, Rivers of Nile, Vale of Maya, After the Burial. I mean, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, and the um, I forget what band it was that I was listening to. But I, I like I always do this like after I listen to a band and it gets to the like you've listened to their music all the way through and then it starts like a radio station. Usually once I hit that point, I will then like scroll to the bottom on Spotify and like see where fans also like and I forget which artist it was, but I saw this one and like the artwork also really caught my eye and like oh this is cool and then like the name omega district also just sounds really cool so i was like all right well they put time into coming up with a cool band name and really Sometimes cool artwork takes, and man. yeah that's all it takes i mean and we had we've had similar experiences you know where we see some cool artwork and we're like all right we definitely have to check this shit out because the artwork is sweet yeah, um, aviations. Av aviations <laughs> is a big one for us. And yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, that's uh, sometimes yeah for for the bands out there. Even if your music is mid, uh, <laughs> just slap some cool artwork on there, and you're gonna get you're gonna get noticed. Again, we're not saying that any of the bands we're putting in here is music is mid because we wouldn't talk about them if they were. But just throwing it out there, sometimes that it gives you a little boost, you know. Yeah, I think like just I don't know. There's something about like you know, you're about to commit to listening to a 45 minute to an hour long LP. And so like you want to see some sort of like sign that it's, you know, quality. So you look at kind of like the bands that they're related to. You look at like the artwork, like did they put in, you know, either money or their own time to like do, you know, a cool design for the, the album artwork and, and stuff and like that kind of gives you a glimpse of like is this going to be worth you know 45 minutes to an hour of my time and so i guess you know it may not necessarily be like you might have not the greatest artwork but have fantastic music um but i think like if you have cool album artwork it definitely helps like it catches your eye it's good advertising I'm literally the dude that goes into a store and buys shit he doesn't need because the packaging's cool. So like for, <laughs> for people like me, the the artwork, I mean that that's a draw, man. That's it's like it is the packaging of the uh, Yeah, I'm definitely I, I just, <laughs> like I'm definitely a sucker for like the box looks so nice. I don't know, I don't know what it is. It, we're both suckers for marketing, I guess. Yep, 100%. <laughs> But anyways, <laughs> uh, Omega District, uh, progressive metal artist from Seattle, Washington. Uh, there's an EP called The Deconstruction of a Universe, and then one full-length record called The Machine Destiny. I think there's also an instrumental version of that out there as well. There is, um, yeah. Uh, for fans of After the Burial, Veil vale of Maya, Riv Rivers of Nile, Between the Buried and Me, bands in that realm. Um, so if any of that sounds like it's up your alley, definitely check it out. Um, we will be linking every all of these bands um, once this episode drops. So uh, definitely go give them a follow, listen to their shit, tell us how right we were for putting them on here. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> yeah, they definitely deserve more. How wrong we are, but 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 we're not wrong. We're never wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on to another band, another progressive metal band. Uh, you're gonna hear some similar comps in here too. So I would say. 
this is probably the closest we're going to we're going to go to like back to back bands where there's a little bit of relevance uh, as we as we go through here. But a band called Ladder Math, progressive metal from Boston, Massachusetts. And it's uh, L-A-T-T-E-R math, yes. not L-A-D-D-E-R. So correct. We're not counting rungs on a ladder. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, how did we discover ladder math? Uh, you told me about them. <laughs> oh shit! So I gotta figure this out. Uh, I I assume it's one of those Spotify rabbit hole situations. Um, because some of the comps that I would give to these guys are definitely bands that I listen to a shit ton. Um, yeah, it's. <laughs> I would say strangely enough, on the list that we have here of bands we wrote down as comps, like the closest comp that I can think of is actually Native Construct. Um, and I could be wrong there. Cause like they, they get a little heavier. The native construct has, a, I mean, native construct has one record quiet world and, uh, they get a little, they get a lot heavier than native construct does. So like between the bear to me is another good comp. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I think it's you- just some of the, some of the, uh, more theatric, not theatric. That's what I'm going to say. Theatrical bits or what made me think of a band like Native Construct or like others by no one who sort of picked up the mantle a bit from Native Construct whenever they sort of Yeah, I think separate way. I do think um Ladder Math has more of the theatrical stuff that's like BT Bam does, but not as much as Native Construct. So I feel like Native Construct fills that like theatrical side of things a little more and BT Bam covers like more of the like heavy side of stuff. Um, yeah, and you pointed out to uh, protest the hero. Oh as a, shit, that's as right. That was a late one. So <laughs> yeah, vocal, and that's a really vocally good one. and actually like even instrumental. Shit, yeah, you're yeah. right, hundred percent. But, but I do. I think Native Damn. Contract and Protest the Hero are probably the two, the yeah. the two best ones. But the Protest the Hero one, like from if for nothing else, at least the vocal standpoint. Whenever yeah. you pointed out, I was like, oh yeah, you're Damn. totally right. That's. That's I should have led one. with that one. <laughs> I should have led with that one. Yeah. Protest the hero. Like, so it took me a while. I was sitting there when I was listening to, uh, yeah, it was two, like on the tip of your tongue for like several yeah. minutes. You were like, what is it? <laughs> they have, they have two records, uh, winter's painting and then a self titled, uh, called ladder math. Winter's painting actually came out this year. And, um, as we were listening through, I was trying to like pinpoint where I was getting this vocal, like, where the vocal, what the vocals were reminding me of. And I said periphery for a second. And I was like, I was content with that. I was like, okay, yeah, that's where I'm at. That's what it is. <laughs> and then just randomly, I was like, oh shit, wait, no, here it is. And like, then I, that's where I came up with protest the hero. So that's, yeah, that's, that's probably the closest comp. I think um, like periphery instrumentals a little more than the vocals, but their, their vocals aren't as like, what's a, what's a way to, describe protest the heroes vocals they're very like almost it's, like freaking glam metally at times like very like that's not the right word that's not what i'm looking for but like people who have listened to protest the hero know what i'm trying to say it's like, <laughs> yeah it's it's, very, I, it is hard to describe like it very like high register and like belts out notes yeah, like and, power metally but like but I not, but not, but I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's hard to describe, but it's, like, a, it's a very protest the hero sound. Like, yeah, I don't they, know. like protest the hero really sounds like protest the hero. Like, and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, ladder math, which duh, but la- you know. ladder math doesn't do a lot of that, like power vocal. Um, it's just sort of the register and the style is what sort of triggered that in my brain, but they don't do a lot of that. Like, I wish. Like, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know how to describe it. I wish I did. Um, I get a little bit of uh, stellar circuits as well. Um, it's definitely like one of the lesser, I think, comps. But I think if you listen to stellar circuits, like you would, you would like ladder math. Like it's not like a direct comparison, but there's just like some parts from like ah, the vocals a little bit in certain parts of certain stellar circuits tracks. Um, there are some songs on, uh, on the newer record, uh, winter's painting 
that give me a little bit of like contortionist vibes just from like a sound or a song structure standpoint. Um, yeah, even there's like how they bounce between like heavies and cleans. Like I get contortionist vibes. I also get heavy monuments vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are good ones. Yeah. You came up with most of the comps for, for this one. I think the only one I offered there was the stellar circuits one and the rest you were actually time, you, but every time I felt like I had it nailed down, something else popped into my brain. Yeah. You were like, on a roll with this one. You're like periphery. No protest the hero. <laughs> yeah. Cause like when I, when I said, I said BT bam at first, because again, sort of that organized chaos sound. And then I was like, but not as much. So then I was like, okay, so maybe native construct because there were some theatrical bits that made me think of that. And then because native construct came into my brain, usually others by no one follows. Um, So I just threw that out there just because to me, those are the two, those are two bands that are very closely related in my brain. Um, But then the contortionist and monuments with some of the song structure stuff. And then I was trying to nail the vocal down and that's where I went from periphery to protest the hero. So that's a little glimpse into my brain of how I <laughs> came up with all that shit. But honestly, I'm, I'm content with all of those bands as comps in some way, uh, to ladder math's discography, uh, in two incredible records. Um, and these guys, like, I mean, all of these bands, like the reason we do the segment is because they're underrated, but I couldn't believe when you told me that like when we were doing like the album of the year discussion and I always like, I'm so bad about keeping up with my list. So I always like check with you of like, Hey, what's on your list? Because I'm sure I forgot to put something and I'm sure I've probably listened to it, but I just didn't put it on my like spreadsheet. And you mentioned ladder math. And I was like, I don't think I've ever listened to them and checked it out. and was like, Holy shit. These guys are really good. And saw they have, I think at the time when I looked, it was like 160 monthly listeners. I was like, how is this not like 160,000? Like, yeah, they're so good. I mean, they're all very good, but this like, I don't know, ladder math in particular is like resonated with me a lot. And I'm glad that you told me about them. Hell yeah. Um, I'm also glad that I told you about them and I'm yeah. glad that I found them somehow. <laughs> we'll never know we'll never know how um again i think i assume it was just the spotify algorithm working in my favor um, yeah it probably it probably was like you just kept listening to the radio station and it just like got you there and for or some you reason, scrolled through the four fans of section yeah. for some reason i feel like and i again i could be wrong with this but i feel like when we were talking to the guys from Nafel, one of them might have mentioned ladder math. I think maybe it was Dan, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So don't quote me on that. I went to like listen back to it, but didn't wasn't able to. So um, yeah. Spotify so, was not working. So I, so Dan, if you're listening to this and you were the one that told me about them or for some reason or another, and you know, I feel free to take you, the credit. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm not I'm not not giving giving you credit on you know. I, I, I don't I just don't remember and I couldn't verify. So. <laughs> <laughs> he he um, did try though. I can I, I can verify try. that he tried. <laughs> I did try. Um but yeah, no, ladder math is awesome. Uh you might be hearing us talk about them a little bit more uh in a in a future episode. Just throw Wink there, wink, but. elbow nudge, elbow nudge. <laughs> <laughs> but uh moving on to our fifth and final band from this Hidden Gems episode. Uh, band artist. I don't know the right way to describe this band or artist um, because I believe again, kind of like uh, um, Omega District. Omega District. Thank you. My brain was <clears throat> kind of like Omega District. Uh, I think it's just one person that does a lot of the stuff. He has some features and stuff on his music, but uh, the band or artist is Wax a Million from Austria, um, and. Of all the bands we've discussed, has the most monthly listeners. Uh, somewhere around, like I think, somewhere around like thirty thousand, which is usually on the borderline for us to put a band or artist in this uh, in this type of episode. Um, but we we thought about it and we were like, you know what, we didn't we had not heard of him uh, up until this point, and because of that, we assumed that a lot of our listeners probably hadn't as well. And we felt like they needed to, you guys yeah. needed to. And uh, so that's why we were like, you know what? Screw it. We're going to do this. And we might, uh, 
we might have a little bit more, you know, content for with Wax a Million or for Wax a Million or about his music or any something like that moving forward. Because uh, listening to his stuff, I think he'd be an interesting guy to maybe even sit down and have a talk with. That'd be kind of cool. That would but, be cool. Um, so maybe more content com- coming soon uh, or soon ish or whatever. 2024. We'll just we'll just say 2024 is soon. <laughs> but listening to his music it's like polyphia or chon or like you know it's it's such chill but like just master class musicianship um yeah it's I, I i love stuff like that where it's just like you can hear the absolute mastery of the instrument but like still want to just like sit there and chill like it's 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 nice to have that sort of combination of uh of feelings whenever you're listening to a, a, an artist and it's like i want to just kind of like sit out on my porch and drink a beer and just chill out in the sun and enjoy this but then you're focusing on the music and you're like holy shit this guy is shredding yeah it it's it has like that like lo-fi hip-hop kind of feel to it but it's definitely like like chon or polyphia like guitar but then it has that sort of like lo-fi hip-hop like element to it so it does have this like very relaxing like lo-fi beats to chill to kind of thing like and even even less hip-hop and more like r&b like very much like it's it's interesting it's 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 a cool blend of you know like i would even throw artists out like pliny or uh uh david maximisek or uh yeah um you know a lot yeah, of those guys who who shred and uh and and sort of stay in that that sort I of actually think, lane. now you say that i actually think i like the pliny comp better than the polyphia one cuz like pliny does a lot more of the like like he shreds like crazy, but he does it in like a really chill way. Whereas Polyphia, it's like chill ish, but like they get into some crazy stuff where it's like not not the chillest, you know, it's like they're they're going for more of a like shreddy, like heavy ish kind of thing. Um but Polyphia does lean into the like the hip hoppy stuff like Wax a Million does too. So like I think they're all good comps, but I'd throw Jacob Zytecki out there as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, and uh, oh, what's another one? Uh, Charlie Robbins, I would even say, is, is a, probably a pretty good comp. Um, and uh, I think, does he, do a, does he do a song with him? He does, yeah. So there's, he actually has a new record coming out here soon. Um, we got a little sneak peek into it. It's pretty freaking awesome. He released a few singles off of it. One of those singles is called Felium. And actually that features, really good. it features Charlie Robbins, who uh, we're a big fan of. Um, that's, that's probably one of my favorite singles. Actually, since we got to listen to the record, um, it's one of my favorite songs off that record. So, uh, and it's out there right now, so definitely go check that out. But um, yeah, Charlie Robbins is another good comp. Uh, cool that he worked with him. Um, yeah, I mean it's it there's there's a lot to like especially if you like sort of just chill music that is also an absolute masterclass in musicianship. Um you know, as a as a guy who likes to pretend like he can play the guitar, like I love uh when when guys come along and make me feel like I should just throw it in the trash. Um, <laughs> and it's and a double edged sword. <laughs> it's like it, they're so impressive. And it's like, it feels bad that you, you feel that way after listening to it, but it's like in honor of this awesome music, I feel like I must dispose of my guitar. At the very least, just put her back in her case for another <laughs> few months. Years, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, just awesome, awesome music. Uh, he's got one full length out there. I am not going to butcher the pronunciation because I do not want to. Do you want to give it a try or do you? Want to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to Englishify it. It looks like, I think it's Mutter Sprach. <laughs> <Something>, I, <laughs> like, I don't know. 
like it's like Mutter, de- Muttersprache. Yeah, something. it's yeah. definitely pronounced it wrong, but it's M-U-T-T-E-R-S-P-R-A-C-H-E. Uh, and that was from 2019. And do we it, have a, do we have a release date on the new record? That's what I want to find real quick. I don't know. Yeah, that's um but I've actually been um I I cuz I listen to a lot of the the lo-fi stuff, particularly like while I'm working on class things because it's nice like the instrumental things. I like don't end up my brain doesn't focus on the lyrics. Um so I listen to a lot of that and since we've, you know, discovered Wax a million, it's sort of replaced that. Like I'm listening to his music as a sort of like, you know, replacement for that lo fi thing, but it it scratches both itches. The lo fi stuff that I listen to while I'm doing my homework and stuff, and like the Chan and you know, Pelini and Polyphia that I listen to all the time as well. So it's this cool niche that I didn't know I wanted. Yeah, I mean, it, it took a while for me to sort of come along with the like the more produced stuff, like you hear from like a guy like Jacob Zitecki or David Maximisi, guys like that, and guys like Wax a Million as well. Um, who is himself? He's also you know a producer. He writes his own you know sort of hip hop inspired beats. Um, but I've also been so ingrained in like the prog rock math rock camp, um, and now that I've sort of started to come along with the synthier, more produced stuff, stuff like what Wax Million's putting out is sort of right up my alley. Um, that prog math rock stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped, uh, to have been able to sort of take a dive into his music. He does have a second record, uh, coming out December 29th, actually. So shit real soon. Um, so, so this, this shortly episode, after this episode, goes I was going to say, so this episode's going to be dropping the so, 23rd. So you're, so it may be live by the time you're listening to the episode, depending on how quick you are to listen to our episode. Right. So if you're, if you're one of those people, uh, especially our friends in Australia who love to stream our shit, the second it drops, shout out to <laughs> all, all our Australian friends. We love you guys and gals. Um, but, uh, you know, you might have to wait a week, but if you're late to the party, it might be out right now. So December 29th, 2023, if you check your calendar and it is past that date, check this shit out. Random notes by Mac, by wax a million, incredible stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to taking a deeper dive on it because I only got a quick little one listen through before this episode. Um, and I'll definitely be wax a million. We'll be sending you an email sort of, I'd love to give you a, little review on, on the new record once I get a chance to listen to it as well. So we'll throw something your way. Um, thank you for sharing it with us as well and for yeah. reaching out. Um, and, and it's awesome. While we haven't formally asked you yet, we'd love to have you on the, on the podcast as well. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to sit down and talk to you about it as well. So, um, but yeah, so wax a million from Austri- Austria. I almost said Australia because I was just talking about our Australian friends, but from <laughs> Austria, we'd love to have some more Austrian friends as well. So uh, I know we do have have some listeners in Austria. Thank you to everyone in Austria that does listen to us. But um, tell your friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> spread the word. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so definitely check out uh, Muthersprach. I don't know if that's I'm, I I. Again, <laughs> I didn't it. even want to try. I gave it a shot. I gave it a shot. You um, did, but uh, much easier p- to pronounce. Random notes dropping December 29th. Wax a million or wax million. Thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity to to check that out early. And yeah, I mean, shit. That's uh, that's 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 five solid bands right there. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, plenty of albums to check out between between all these bands so yeah a lot of a lot of new music hopefully um maybe for some of you it's not new music because you guys are just better versed in in the sort of underground uh progressive metal progressive rock scene but um for those who aren't uh exploring bird song prog rock prog rock pop whatever you want to call them uh Piano driven is kind of what they describe themselves. Fantastic band effect, uh, progressive death metal. We said sludge metal, doom metal, groove metal, uh, all the if, metal. 
Meshuga esque Gorguts, Car Bomb, Black Anvil. You know, if you like those bands, definitely check out Effect, Omega District. We were comping them to like After the Burial, Veil of Maya, Rivers of Nile, BT Bam, uh, Ladder Math. Had a whole fucking slew for them. BT Bam, <laughs> Stellar Circuits, Native Construct, Obno. Uh, others by no one. I shouldn't shorten that. Uh, the Contortionist Monuments, Periphery, Protest the Hero. Uh, and then Wax a Million, uh, Polyphia Chan, Jacob Zitecki, Pliny, uh, Charlie Robbins, David Maximisik, you know, all those freaking incredible guitarists. Uh, and he's right up there with them. He's fantastic. So, um, yeah, a lot of, lot of homework for you guys to do. Um, <laughs> there will be a quiz later. <laughs> we would, we, again, we love sort of hearing from bands, but we also love hearing from you guys. You know, what should we be listening to that we don't already? What, uh, what's an unknown band that you listen to that we need to check out? You know, there's no guarantee that we're going to throw them on something like this, but that doesn't super matter, right? Like, you, we're, we're a community to share music. So, you know, we'd love to hear sort of what we need to be listening to. And who knows, uh, if, 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 you, if you shoot us a band and we end up putting them on here, we'll definitely shout you out. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll give you the credit, but. Um, yeah, we like to we like to give everybody proper proper credit if if our brains can remember. <laughs> that's true. That's true. We we have a lot of shit going on in our lives. But, <laughs> um, but this is one of the more fun things that we have going on. And we're glad that we get to keep doing it. And uh, absolutely, yeah, it's, this uh, is awesome. And coming up soon, one week from today, or I say today, when this episode week drops from, today. <laughs> yeah, when this episode <laughs> drops. One week from this episode dropping will be our album of the year episode. Um, so definitely mark that on your calendars. That'll be dropping. Shit, what is that Saturday? Is that the it 30th? the 30th, yeah. Just Saturday, in time for New Year's. Just, Saturday, December 30th, just in time for New Year's. Uh, you know, put it on as the ball drops, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, try to time it. So we, talk, we, we announce our album of the year right as the ball drops. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> But uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely, uh, definitely looking forward for to that one dropping. That's always one of our favorite ones to do. Um, but like you s- sort of said at the beginning of this one, Matt, this is sort of the format that encompasses all that we kind of are and all that we wanted out of this podcast. Sort of why we created this, whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate everybody. Um, and until next, next time we'll, uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks.